minutes of the show just like this. We'd have to do zero work. Uh, I'm Kevin Pereira. It's good to see you. Yeah. I'm Candace Bailey. Yeah. And together, we're attacking the showsies. Yay! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's doing that at home. Uh, by the way, if you live in New York, uh, you may have noticed Attack of the Show ads are all over your efficient but disgusting subway system. One eagle-eyed viewer sent us this slightly altered version of us on our billboards. I, I think we're supposed <laughs> I like to. It. Yeah, I think we're supposed to discourage that. But hell no! If those ads are still up, go to town. Yeah. Have your way with them. And send us a picture. Yeah, please do. At least do that. Uh, on the show today, folks, Gadget Prawn will rate the brand new Verizon iPhone 4. <laughs> Finally, a phone comes to Apple's best-selling mobile device. You can make calls on it. Then everything you've been told about gaming is a lie. Yeah, games can make us better and change the world, but if you don't believe me, and you shouldn't, today's loop will set you straight. Plus, lock and load for the shit show! Oh! You just Lesson murdered Scott, the audience. I did. Wes and Scott takes us to a big-ass firearms conference. Whether you prefer a Barrett 50 Cal from your protection, for home protection, or you need to pick off the leader of an invasion with a Blackheart sniper rifle. I don't know what either of these guns are. <laughs> they go pew, pew. Good for you. That's all you need to know. And, <laughs> and we'll close the show with a tribute to unpaid, uneducated, unprofessional stunt kids in another painful great moment of the evolution. Yay! Around the net is educational. Yeah, like Four Loco is relaxing. I told you what would happen. All right, all right, all right. They don't. The kids don't know about this. They don't know. Well, I, know you know, on. you right. know what's going Just on. Just get to the clinic. In at number five today, a short film with a surprise ending. Watch closely. Don't worry. No, no, no. I can, I can tell you're all very concerned. Don't worry. He lived, so. Well, um, we don't know that he died. Yeah, but I think you round up, right? I like it. <laughs> Not knowing about death is the .5, okay. so you get there. He's fine. And at number four today, a clip from a recent episode of Family Feud. Yeah, it turns out one of these competing families is really fun to hang out with. <laughs> Name something that gets passed around. Oh, Chris. A joint. A joint. <laughs> Let's turn around and see how many weed heads are out there with Chris. A joint. Okay, Tracy, only four answers topic, so. The collection played at church. <laughs> Looking for some saving here. Church place. <laughs> oh, all the weed heads out there. All the weed heads. Where are those marijuana viewers at? <laughs> Love it. Name something you pass around. It's easy. Candace Bailey. That's what I, I mean, I figured it would. Okay. Uh -uh. Something you pass around. Something you pass uh, uh, needles at a park. No. Okay. I should have gone with Allie. Something with Allie. you casually share with friends. Chlamydia. Yes. Oh. Oh. Well, it's not like they know. Oh. <laughs> In at number three today, get your six pack of Coors Light and the keys to Daddy's pickup truck. Woo! It's time for another redneck jump your truckathon. Hey, my drinking. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I love that our society cheers on a man that could be dead after dumping his truck into a mountain of dirt. Well, that's, that's not society cheering, Candace. That's the South, all right? Let's be. I am from the South. <laughs> and I rest my case. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
What? Hey, 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 hey! What? Did, what? What are you? No, what? What I are you? I told you I would kick what, you. What are you really? I. At first, I was excited. Then I was scared. Then I went back to excited. I didn't really know what you were gonna do. You are just so mountable. I get it. But... <laughs> Control your urges. <laughs> Constantly walking like this down the halls. <laughs> Sorry. And at number two today, this is so disgusting. I wash my hands of it. Literally, I will wash my hands after this. Yeah, ladies always seem to have a, a tasty snack in their purse, right? It's just something they carry around. Question, what if they don't have a purse? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, it's gross to view it like that, but it's still more sanitary than like the Sizzler salad bar. Oh. No. I wonder what her answer would be at the Family Feud. Pass around. Ew. E. coli. Ew. <laughs> Come on, let me touch your eyeball. <laughs> still ahead. <laughs> we got our hands on the new Spider-Man teaser, and I'm telling you, it's epic. Yeah. Epic. Today's ATN featured a woman who was chowing down on an unknown crack snack. We're left with only one horrifying question that we actually need you to help us answer. What backside buffet treat was she eating? Tweet your responses to at AOTS, hashtag OMGROFLOL. If your delicious response satiates our appetite, we'll feature it on this Friday's show. So reaching back to Spidey's rich history for things that work. It's a smart move. For instance, the uh, campy theme song to the 60s animated Spider-Man show. You guys remember that? Yeah. Okay. After today's number one, I promise you'll always associate it with the brand new Spider-Man movie starring Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Spider-Man movie won't be CG. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that almost that almost brightened my day, but I'm I'm actually really bummed. This is a huge bummer. That video is a huge bummer. We've seen worse than that, haven't we? It's not that 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 bargain bin Spider-Man, and, and I'm using that term very loosely, is stepping all over the buzz for my new album, and I don't appreciate it. Oh. Yeah. I don't really want to ask about this, do I? You don't need to. There was a commercial, and I don't even think we're going to air it now because he ruined, he ruined, he ruined. No, no, I'm no sure he took the wind out of my sails, and I don't think we should. I said, no, I don't think. Okay, go ahead, just roll it. World renowned percussion artist Kevin Pereira is back with a stereophonic experience destined to please the ears and excite the loins. Prepare your various orifices for Kevin Pereira slaps the world. Hear for yourself as Kevin slaps his metronomic member to the smash hit, D-Slap. Then, cool things down a bit with the smooth, soulful funk of Baby Come Listen to Me Smacka. Travel south of the border to places only Kevin Barrera can take you with Vamos a Mi Entrepierna. And make sure you're sitting down when Kevin Barrera gears up for one of his spellbinding thap solos. Act now and get Kevin's album of patriotic songs, Slap the Vote, at no additional charge. 
Order Kevin Pereira Slaps the World today for just $19.99 on cassette or $24.99 on DVD audio. We accept cash, money orders, and the Diners Club card. Supplies are limited. Satisfaction not guaranteed. Order today. Call now. Mm. <sighs> I'm here in Vegas, but not to gamble my money away. No, not when there's 650,000 square feet filled to the brim with weapons. I'm at the Las Vegas SHOT Show. Home to thousands of weapon manufacturers and over 57,000 gun enthusiasts, the 2011 SHOT Show is where you can find the biggest and baddest weapons all under one roof. Kisses. Just another reason that I love the SHOT Show. So, Lou, tell me what sets apart this AR-15 from the others. To begin with would be the floating handguard system that we have. There's no contact with our handguard. It completely free floats the barrel. Also, the barrel quality that we have, it's a premium criterion barrel that is okay. chrome lined to military standards. And the rifling twist rate on our product for this rifle here is one in seven twist which allows us to stabilize any bullet weight. Our flash suppressor that we have here is also a can adapter for a silencer. Coupled with that, we also have a two-stage trigger mechanism, which gives the marksman complete control over the firearm. The rifle's barrel is 20 inches long, and has semi-automatic. Okay. The rifle's chambered in 5.56 by 45 NATO ammunition. Any member of the general public that can legally own a firearm can purchase one of these firearms. What am I gonna pay for a beautiful weapon like this? 28.75. Dwight, what makes this gun so unique? It's a okay. very simplistic design, but it's very, very high tech. So it, it shoots better with hot defense ammo than any other pistol in his class. It's the size of a Blackberry. It's a, got a 2.7 inch barrel. It only weighs 17 ounces. Part of that's because it has an aluminum frame, of course, which cuts the weight down. It's a single stack magazine, six plus one rounds. What am I looking at purchase price for one of these babies? $735. We just launched it today at the SHOT Show, so this is brand new. Okay. It's gonna be a concealed carry pistol, no doubt about it. That's what it was designed to do. What was the choice uh, with going with nine millimeter? Why? Well, it's so much more powerful than a 380, and it's not large enough to do a 45 and it's actually finished in Kempro 2 which is our own proprietary finish that is self lubricating and resistant to salt in the elements self lubricating i only wish they made that for <laughs> other things this is our star of the show this is the M107 A1 so it's alteration one of the U.S. Army's M107. Okay. This gun is four pounds lighter. It's got titanium in all the good spots. It's uh, suppressor ready now, so we can shoot a can on the end of the gun. It's got a new one-piece aluminum upper receiver. It's everything everybody loved about the M107, just more, faster, stronger, lighter. General public, can they purchase this? You could, or you could purchase a car. Okay. Because this thing is about, <laughs> this thing is about 12 grand, I believe. Okay, so 12 grand, so I can have a Hyundai, or I can have a 50 cal. And which one is going to impress your friends? The 50 cal. I, I agree. Trying to hold this up, not going to happen unless you're Luke Rigno. 22, 50 cal. There you go. The real gun. I, there's, I don't even know why I held up my arm next to his. It was just like, you, you know. Do it anymore. Yeah. You keep your arm down for the rest of your life. Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> So here at the SHOT Show, I played with sniper rifles, concealed weapons, and grenade launchers, amongst an array of other things. The only thing I haven't found, laser-guided missiles. Somebody here's got to have those. Everybody had an awesome time smuggling that sniper rifle onto his return flight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he keistered it. No, no, no. In, the, in this case, the term keistered is a euphemism for mailed it using his own internal poster tube. Do you know what I mean? Do not want. I guess you guys knew what it meant then. Okay. Still ahead. Can games make us better and change the world? Your mom says no, but the loop says yes. And later, hallelujah, Gadget Prime reviews the Verizon iPhone. Hey, do you, do you hear that? Ah, yeah, it's the sound of new free music for your ear holes. First up, Chicago rapper Kid's sister is back with a fresh new mixtape and sound. Intimately titled Kiss 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 Kiss, this mix boasts 13 eclectic tracks, including the car stereo banger Gucci Ragtop featuring Gucci Mane. 
But if that's too much swag for you, then tone it down and chill out with indie rockstars Freelance Wales. This New York-based five-piece formed in 08 through Craigslist ads. And you might recognize their sound from Twitter's relaunch video late last year. But it's this graceful melody entitled Enzymes that caught our attention this week. Lastly, you'll want to post a link to your Valentine's Facebook wall with this one. Because the British house group Dirty Vegas has returned with a dancey hit single called Electric Love. Featuring the talents of actress Jenna Malone in the music video, Electric Love is also the name of the Grammy-winning trio's new album, due out this April on Om Records. All three tracks are gifts from the artist to you, so what are you waiting for? Get online and grab some free beats. I am shooting Bikini Feed with Bikini Girls reading the news. Can you take that close-up? There are worse jobs I could be doing, I guess. Ultra Mag 64. Candace, will you do the Spider Man dance? Yeah, yeah, yeah Spider Man dance. Yeah, give him a little bit. Right, let me clear frame. You go ahead. You got it. That's all you got. <laughs> Always doing the smack off frame. I was trying to, I was trying to back you up. That's it. That's, that's all. all you get. That was great. No, that's more than enough. Thank He'll you. loop that and have a Thank year's you. worth of material. <laughs> um, you want to read one? Drizzle wants to. Okay, so. He said, how long will it take for Kevin's arm to turn blue due to the tight shirt that I have on? <laughs> Listen. That's funny. He's busting out. Anything's going to look like old, a baby gap in this bad boy, all right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, oh, oh, easy, easy. We should cut the sleeves, though. That does look a little ridiculous. Now we should. Do we have scissors? We'll get some scissors later. We'll get some scissors and we'll cut the sleeve yeah. during the feed. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. All do right, we want to do another one, or are we? Uh, we can do one more. Uh, Powder XL. Says, my lead speak is still decent, by the way. Um, I think I heard him slap the ATN chant in there. It's now on my CD wish list. Oh, he's referring to my, uh, my thigh slapping tunes. Yeah, huh. those are good. I like the way to go, Candace Bailey Five, for standing up for the South. <laughs> they don't have the That's internet right. there. How did he get that on the wall? I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. Awesome. If you want to be a part of the show and end up on our Twitter wall, tweet us at AOTS or use the hashtag AOTS. Now, here's Sarah Underwood. <laughs> you, just, you, just said, you just said wood. <laughs> you get it? I did. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's time to start the feed. It's Wednesday. February 9th, and here are your top stories. Bad news, plastic guitar fans. Activision Blizzard has announced the end of the, oh, the Guitar Hero franchise. Oh. Yeah, due to some less than stellar financial forecasts for the upcoming year, the company has decided to abruptly drop development of the popular music game. Instead, they plan to shift their focus to more stable franchises like Call of Duty and World of Warcraft. I mean, shucks, now you're just gonna have to learn to play a real instrument, aren't ya? <laughs> and HP in the Palm took to the stage earlier today to show off a new tablet and their revamped WebOS. The HP touchpad has a 9.7 inch screen and runs the new tablet optimized version of their OS. It boasts a dual core Snapdragon processor, up to 32 gigs of storage, true multitasking, and the ability to do video chat. And unlike the iPad, it has full flash support. But buried beneath their big tablet unveiling was the Veer, a tiny pre-like smartphone that's as small as a credit card. The Veer will be available sometime this spring while the touchpad will hit shelves this summer. Unfortunately, there was no mention of pricing. Now, the director behind Snakes on a Plane is in a battle to keep the title of his next film to be Untitled 3D Shark Thriller. <laughs> I don't understand it either. According to Vulture, David Ellis is currently bumping heads with studio execs over the movie, which was initially billed as Shark Knight 3D. Ellis wasn't a fan of the title from the beginning, so after a long vetting process, he settled on the IMDb-inspired working title, Untitled 3D Shark Thriller. As Ellis explains, the title gives you everything you need to know. It's a thriller, 
It has sharks and it's in 3D. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I am sold. Sold, for sure. And finally, the Vatican isn't happy about a new iPhone app that's being sold as an alternative way to absolve yourself of your sins. Hmm. The $2 app called Confession, a Roman Catholic app, includes suggested acts of contrition that allow people to skip the confession booth and gain mobile absolution. While an archbishop from Indiana said the app was A-OK, -okay, the Vatican wasn't too keen on people skipping out on church for a mobile solution. An official spokesperson said, under no circumstances is it possible to confess by iPhone. Next up, an app for baptisms. Just remember, AfterCare doesn't cover damages due to liquid, even if it's holy water. I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Now back to Kevin and Candace. Thanks, Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. I'm going to just clap like this from now on. <laughs> you can hear I'll the, do it with you. You can hear the piercing <laughs> jingle, though. Hey, guess what? We sent a robot to the International Space Station. Oh, yeah, that sounds safe. Fifty years ago, NASA made history by sending the first chimp into space. And while Ham the Chimp didn't come back super intelligent, he did help pave the way for our exploration of the stars. Just last month, scientists at NASA continued to make history with the discovery of the oldest object in the known universe, a small galaxy located 13.2 billion light years away, named UDFJ3954628484. This ancient galaxy was formed 500 million years after the Big Bang, making it the oldest and most distant object ever found. A recently upgraded Hubble telescope captured the light from this galaxy, which took over 13 billion years to reach Earth, making it a literal snapshot of how the universe looked in its infancy. With the discovery of UDFJ, scientists have evidence that the growth of galaxies after the Big Bang was dramatic and now have a better understanding of our universe's formative years. Though this find has pushed the Hubble telescope to its limits, NASA scientists are ready to look even further with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope in 2014. But as we head away from the outer reaches of the universe, we return to Earth, where NASA will break new ground by launching the first humanoid robot into space. Named Robonaut 2, or R2, with no relation to another pint-sized robot, this legless robot will be heading to the International Space Station later this month aboard the Discovery. This ambidextrous robot will be used for menial tasks, like cleaning the station and vacuuming filters, which will then free up the astronauts. Think of him as a galactic janitor of sorts. Eventually, NASA hopes to use the Robonaut series for the exploration of worlds and as a first responder in case an emergency breaks out on the space station. Though he's just a torso with arms for now, the Robonaut 2 will get his real space legs at a later date, but we know what he really needs. And finally, the search for life on other planets has taken a huge step forward. Just last week, NASA announced that they discovered over 1,200 potential exoplanets with the Kepler satellite. Of these planets, 54 of them have been found in the habitable zone, the orbit a planet must have for liquid water to exist on the surface. Among these 54, five of them are Earth-sized, with the remaining 49 ranging from twice the size of Earth to larger than Jupiter, and all with various masses. Some are as dense as styrofoam, while others are more like iron. All 1,200 planets were found in a relatively small window as the Kepler satellite could only study one area of the Milky Way galaxy, which equaled out to be one four hundredth of the sky. Based on this, scientists from NASA believe that there must be millions of exoplanets in our galaxy and expect to find many more over the coming months and years. Every day we search the stars for answers to the universe. And though the tools may change, every discovery gets us one step closer to the answer. Now, when video games get press, it's almost always bad, unfortunately. But my guest today knows what you already do, that video games can be great for you. So throw back some magic mushrooms. Let's do the loop. <laughs> Joining me to help us make sense of it all, she's a game designer and author of Reality is Broken, Why Games Make Us Better and How They Can Change the World. Jane McGonigal is here, everybody. Yay! How are you, Jane? Good, thank you. 
Um, always, always glad to have somebody on that, that sees a positive side to anything gaming related. Um, and in your book, there's a there's a staggering figure in there, and I want to make sure that I get it right. Um, it was three billion hours a week are spent playing games. Is that true? Yeah, that's and right. uh, almost six million years have been spent playing World of Warcraft since it was released. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, that's, pretty staggering. Yeah, numbers. that's. I mean, that, I guess it's laugh worthy, but that scares me a little bit. Like that's that seems like a lot of time invested in something. Like I played World of Warcraft for maybe a hundred hours since its release, and the only thing that changed in the world was like a, a guy in China made money off me because I bought gold, and you know my girlfriend didn't have to fake as many orgasms. That was about it for like for like an eight month run of time. Now, how does that translate into the, the world at large getting a positive change? Right, we think that games are escapist and that we're just ignoring our real life by playing. But mm -hmm. what the research in my book shows is that games actually change the way we think and act in real life. And if you take your game seriously, they're actually helping you power up real skills and abilities like not giving up in the face of failure, learning from failing and getting better, mm -hmm. being more likely to collaborate with others, long-term strategy, being able to motivate yourself. And, right. and it looks like this is actually trickling over into the real lives of gamers so that they're more motivated and more likely to succeed in real life. Now, I don't want to be the, the consummate uh, um, skepticist here, but I mean, is, is there a dark side to that as well where you get so used to, to not, I mean, because failure in a video game is, all right, I click into the button, I respond, that's it. Maybe I have to repair some armor or, you know, apologize to a guild mate. But y y I fail, that's it, I'm back in, I'm good to go. And in real life, failure is sometimes met with some very serious consequences. So couldn't it lead to escaping more if I, if I want to avoid actual failure in my life? You know, like it's, it's better to try in that virtual world. Yeah, well, that's why I write about the, we have to take these superpowers from the game and mm -hmm. bring them to a real life. You know, most of the time we're scared of failing in real life. There aren't real consequences. We're going to be embarrassed or maybe we'll look bad, right. feel stupid. But, you know. A couple nights in the clink, a drink in the face. It's fine. It's, it's a Saturday in Tijuana. They'll forget that. You. That wouldn't be a good way yeah. to fail. But, you know, we, we're not afraid of looking stupid in games. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're not afraid of having to try multiple times. And so the, the big thing is really to start taking these gamer abilities and saying, you know, I'm not afraid of this in real life either. Now, now I like that in, in theory. How, have there been practical applications of that, of taking gaming aspects and applying them to real life that have affected things positively? Sure. I mean, I actually had a pretty crazy experience last year. I hit my head. I had a mild traumatic brain injury. And a month later, I still hadn't healed. And I was going crazy. And my doctor said, you have to be happy or your brain won't heal because negative emotions stop the healing. Really? So I was like, geez, the only way I know to provoke positive emotions and get more optimistic is if I could turn this into a game. So I actually made a game called Super Better to cure my head injury. And it worked and we're actually developing it as a commercial app for people to as take. like a therapeutic application yeah, that's yeah, incredible yeah because yeah. I, I i mean i hear apply game mechanics to the real world and i think okay i have to teabag as many people as possible <laughs> that is the only way to celebrate in halo but yeah. <laughs> but a game like a game like a halo or a grand theft auto or pagel or even farmville are there aspects of that game that you can apply or any of those games yeah to... yeah absolutely i mean just the simple aspect of having this outlet to have positive stress where we're achieving our own goals mm. the science shows that playing those games makes us more likely to set ambitious goals in our real lives you know even playing rock band I know you can't play guitar hero too much more but no no you can't <laughs> but you're more likely to pick up an instrument and try and play it in real life that so, is true so this is this is good now you know maybe you'll be more ready when the aliens come I don't know but in the meantime you can look for for Epic wins in your real life. Okay, see that. Now, who's going to take advantage of this concept first? Because uh, I worry about a future where uh, someone makes a mini game out of your every move and breath and thought, and it's probably going to be a giant corporation or television network that rewards you for, for saying certain things or doing certain things. Or, oh, you, you mentioned have a Coke and a smile today. We picked it up on your cell phone's microphone. You get five Coke bucks to spend at the Coke store. You know, uh, yeah. is... Could it fall into the wrong hands, this concept, or has it already fallen into the wrong hands? No, it could, but that's why it's up to the gamers not to play games like that. I mean, mm. that's our choice. If we don't play it, So they why can't... is Farmville so damn popular? <laughs> yeah, now Farmville... I mean... I'm, I play Farmville. When I was writing my book, I was feeling so unproductive. I would spend all day on a single sentence, but I could be very productive in Farmville. I could make, you know, harvest my crops and get my little puppy happy and help my friends, you know, feed right. the chickens and stuff. Right. 
Right. And, you know, even if I can't see them every day in real life and do something meaningful, just stopping by their farm, helping out, you know, it, it keeps that them That just sounds life. like such a slippery slope. Like, yeah, my, my grandma's sick. She's millions of miles away, but I, I poked her on Facebook, so well, I'll back tell to you, the dungeon. I know, but there's a new platform that's actually trying to take games like that and mm -hmm. put them in real life. It's called Ground Crew, and there's actually an app where you can find local farms near you, community farms, urban gardens, and instead of it saying, hey, feed Chelsea's chickens on Facebook, it'll be like, hey, there's like a community garden with chickens around the corner. Do you want to like sneak in and feed some chickens? Love it. Love it. Well, when the dealers in my neighborhood get on the Grand Theft Auto model and I can smash Ooh. some cars for bonus points, <laughs> I'll be super happy. Okay. No, listen, uh, uh, it's a fantastic read. I loved your TED Talk, by the way. I think everybody needs to, to watch that as well online. Um, Jane, I, I hope you are right. I truly do. And thank you for saying positive things about gaming and gamers for once. For sure. Really appreciate it. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Jane McGonigal, everybody. Thank you for keeping us in the loop. Uh, guys, the, the book, again, it's reality is broken and it's available now. But now we must head over to Canvas. Stay tuned. The moment we've all been waiting for is here. Gadget Prawn reviews the Verizon iPhone coming up next. The feed is brought to you by the General Automobile Insurance Services. For the best car insurance rates online, go to the General and save some time. Apple is finally in the phone business. Now, there really isn't much difference between the Verizon iPhone's design and AT&T's. Mm -hmm. they bo they're both uh, thin. They've got the glass body that we love. The volume buttons right here. Sorry, I'm showing it the wrong way. The volume buttons and switch on the side have moved down just a hair. So is this going to change how yeah. we use it? No, I mean you'll have to adjust your finger uh, a, a three millimeters down to get used to the new the new button placement. Uh -huh. But what will matter is that the iPhone cases that are on the market right now won't work with the Verizon iPhone. Most of them won't. Come on, it's stupid. Some jerk That's designer annoying. was like, "Oh, it could make five extra cents. Fantastic!" And so they will, and they'll gouge you, and you'll buy it. That's what we do. Um, sometimes when we use the death grip on the phone, we lose a bar or two of uh, signal, but we didn't lose the signal completely, which is important, which is uh, also different than the uh, AT&T version. Now, probably the biggest question on everyone's mind is, can the iPhone finally make calls? Yep. <laughs> No, I can. We just got the iPhone on Monday. Uh, so far, we've had very few issues. We drove to different locations here in Los Angeles. We compared the two carriers. There wasn't much difference in the signal bars, but we did notice that AT&T fluctuated mm -hmm. uh, a bit more, and you know, we got less drop calls. The, the bottom nice. line is, we're also more confident in Verizon than AT&T. It's a fact that they just have fewer drop calls <laughs> and better coverage. There's no way around it. Now, AT&T claims that they have a faster 3G network than Verizon, so we did some speed tests to find out. Yeah, Verizon seems to come out on top here in LA, only barely, but they do. Download speeds seem to be a little faster on Verizon. The upload speeds are a little faster on AT&T. Um, the difference is small, and really, uh -huh. your mileage is going to vary. It all depends on exactly where you are. You always hear that, well, Verizon's great for me. Yeah, well, yeah. AT&T is great. Well, you never hear that. Never, well, you never I hear always AT &T hear is that AT&T is not great. Yeah, you do hear that. But, I mean, it depends on what part of the country you're in and if you're in a cement bunker when you're trying to make calls. <laughs> okay. One feature that's unique to Verizon is that you can make, uh, you can now make your iPhone a Wi-Fi hotspot for up to five devices. Yes, you can. And starting the hotspot is super easy. You, you literally just turn it on. It's a settings uh, little option there. And up to uh, a whole bunch of devices can connect with uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and USB. It, I mean, it's, it's foolproof. You turn uh -huh. it on and it works. Here's awesome. the thing. 20 bucks a month for two gigs of data on top of your existing data package. So that's, that's a bit of a bummer. Okay. But yeah. also, you can't talk and use a 3G connection at the same time Correct. on any Verizon phone, which means... Which means if you get a phone call, all the devices will lose network connection. See, now that yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. It does come right back on uh, if you hang up, though. But this is, uh, and I can't say this enough, this is one huge advantage to having the AT&T iPhone. And this is coming from someone who hates AT&T. I would get uh -huh. rid of them in a second. I was hoping to switch. But you, you can't talk and surf at the same time on the Verizon phone. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, now, you can talk and surf if you're on Wi-Fi with Verizon. That will work oh, just can. fine. Yeah, but uh, not if you're on the cellular network. Okay. Now, everything else is the same. Amazing interface, dual cameras, mm -hmm. thousands of apps. It smells like Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So for 200 bucks with a contract on Verizon, what are we rating it? Uh, four out of five. Yeah. So, I know, you're screaming at your 
TVs, calm down. Why is it not a five, you ask? Well, it, it's simple. Verizon's data plan is a little bit more expensive than AT&T. It's 30 bucks a month for unlimited data. I like okay. that it's unlimited. What's AT&T? Um, it's like 25 for two gigs, okay. you know, or 15 for 200 megs. Um, again, I'm a fan of unlimited data, but some people will complain that it's five bucks more, even though it is unlimited. Um, okay. The biggest sticking point, you can't talk and surf. Yeah. That is a huge, huge, huge problem. And Apple will most likely be releasing a 4G iPhone give or take six months from now, and that should drop the price of this phone oh, nice. uh, pretty drastically. So uh, four to five is not, not bad at all. So listen, if, you, if making calls is super important for you, yay Verizon iPhone. Yay. There you go. All right, that's it. <laughs> Drug laws. <laughs> Verizon right. party for one. <laughs> Are not likely to be reformed anytime soon for one simple reason. Uh, there's too much money to be made by incarcerating young nonviolent offenders. Yeah. Uh, totally unrelated. A new season of Campus PD starts tonight at 8. Woo! If you can't wait for our show to end before the roundup begins, you can shout up the spurs and charge your taser over at g4tv.com slash campus PD. Unless you're here in L.A., you're most likely buried under the snow. It's time to attack these ways to get around in the winter. deep in snow and your old boots just aren't cutting it. Instead, walk on slow snow like Aquaman walks on dolphins by strapping on these inflatable snowshoes. Sure, it may just look like an inner tube wrapped around a shoe, but that's because it pretty much is. Who cares, they still do the job and don't take up a lot of space. It sure looks cooler than walking around on tennis rackets. If you really want, you could even try walking on water. On second thought, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Sledding is awesome, period. But gliding down the hill on a metal disc doesn't provide much control. So hug the hills like a Porsche with this bobsled, which, as luck would have it, is actually designed and manufactured by Porsche. Made in Germany, this marvel of European engineering provides ultimate control. It's lightweight and promises precise steering and braking. But as we all know, Porsches don't come cheap. This badass sled will cost you over 300 bucks but you'll be the envy of every 12-year-old on the hill. And finally, if a sled is too childish for you and you want a little horsepower to get around the slopes, then check out this gas-powered snowboard. This stand-up vehicle is pretty much like snowboarding without all the effort. Gun and throttle and carve the hills at speeds of up to 18 miles per hour. No bending, down, balancing, or anything. It weighs about 150 pounds and can accommodate hefty riders of up to 250 pounds. But for this lazy man's dream, you'll need to cough up about $2,500. Kind of a lot. Head on over to g4tv.com slash AOTS for info on all of these ways to traverse the snow and more. Coming up, great moments and de-evolution will end all hope you have for our species. Zombie and puppy cuddle fest. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on an all new Attack of the Show. Adult entertainer Caden Cross will be here live in our studio to unzip a sneak peek of G4's AEE 2011. Then Chris Hardwick heads to the clouds with a special preview of the new Chrome OS netbook. And Allison Hayslip hangs out with Adam Sandler, Brooklyn Decker, and Jennifer Aniston and decides to just go with it. See it tomorrow. Uh, I'm a dude, so of course I know that award show season is here. Obviously. Uh, and we're trying to get nominated for a shorty, which is the best of Twitter. Yeah. You guys can help us by tweeting this sentence. I nominate at AOTS for a shorty award in hashtag television because... And then make something up. Oh, I thought you wanted us to put in a bunch of underscores. Um, <laughs> nominations end on Friday, February 11th, so get on it. And thanks for your tweets. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Now, when Ben Franklin put a key on a kite during a lightning storm, he discovered electricity. And when it shocked his balls, he discovered great moments in de-evolution. <laughs> Here at Attack of the Show, we know very, 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 very little about very. the game of cricket. <laughs> but we're pretty sure this is the wrong way to play. Seriously? Remember that? Remember that? 
10 minutes ago when we were saying that like the gaming generation is going to save society and the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. we see that. Yeah, they play Call of Duty. Don't worry. <laughs> now, this week's rating system is Confederate Coco. How many are we giving him? <laughs> One out of five, I think. Agreed. <laughs> Still don't get it, but all right. All right. Cool. Nutshots are normally a two-man show. Like any relationship, it's a give and take. Someone gives immense pain while the other takes it. Yes. Not in this video. This guy makes do with a light tube that's strapped to a two-by-four and a cinder block and some good old southern ingenuity. Shut up. I hate saying that he's from the South. That was definitely the South, right? I was just kidding, Thank but that was that. legit. What was he looking, looking over his shoulder no, for? Was he making, well, hope Uncle Jesse not here. So yeah. <laughs> I, don't get, I don't get that at all. Uh, but how so many, stupid. How many cups of Confederate cocoa are we giving this gentleman? Uh, I'm going to say three out of five. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, now it makes sense. Uh, finally, a grill. You know, girl can be a man's best friend. But it can also be a horrifying death trap. Hey, just so you know, when they flex like that, it means they're about to explode. There you go, going up right. Hey, can you... Do it! I'll be hard. I think that? that was like a, a redneck hurt locker. I think that's what that was. That was like them Something sweeting it for YouTube. Something blew up in his face. Yeah. Were they, did they sound Australian to you? They sounded yeah. Australian, right? Yeah. 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 Aussies are like southerners of the world. So I think yeah. we had a good streak Kevin, there. stop it today. What are you going to do? You gonna, race a monster you know. truck in my front yard? And... <laughs> I'm so not good with comebacks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think of something in about an hour. All right, all right. I'll you tell will. you, you then. How many are we giving him? I think five out of five. Yay! Bust your balls and break your face. Use a skateboard or some maze. Yeah! <laughs>Hey, many thanks to Jane McGonigal for coming on the old program today. I thank hope you. she's right about her future. I hope so. Fingers crossed. Make sure to stick around. A new episode of Campus PD starts in about 15 seconds. It will most likely <laughs> feature seven. Uh, they're all mad at me on Twitter for the seven stuff. And for the shirt. Ah! Yes! I will. I didn't feel that because uh, my arms are made of cinder blocks. Good night. You're going to hurt your hand. <laughs>